So you're an idealist that wants to change the world. You view the world as corrupt and oppressive. It has nothing to do with you drinking, smoking, partying all the time, willingly taking on massive amounts of debt, refusing to pick up a book. No, that has nothing to do with it. It's the system's fault. Your first instinct is to exclaim, if we don't get what we want, we're gonna burn the system down and make a new one. While also screaming stereotypical rhetoric like calling people pigs or white fascist racists with a healthy amount of profanity sprinkled in between, of course. If you're on the other side, maybe you wanna scream from the rooftops, you dirty no good commies. But before you do that, ask yourself, who is that gonna change? Is it gonna change the middle class mom that's just trying to provide for her kids? How about the husband that may not have that much, but is working towards a promotion and has his eyes on a new car? Are you gonna change their minds by wanting to burn down everything they've worked for? No, you're merely gonna make a fool of yourself. We have to be sneakier, more subtle in our methods of insurrection. So whether you're an idealist or maybe you're in or want to be in the 1% and you want to prevent the plebeian masses from stripping you down, we have to learn how to communicate the changes we want in a way that actually gets through people's thick heads. Sure, you can call people racist or commies all day, but you're never going to get them on your side, and that is where the real power is. Or in other words, we have to learn the art of the revolution. Revolutions are nothing new, they're just a part of human society. Revolutions don't have to be communist revolutions either, as it's associated with today. All a revolution really is, is a change from whatever the status quo was at the time. That means if the current system is communist, then the revolution could be a capitalist one. If the current system is a crony capitalist one, the revolution could be a communist, socialist, or even a more capitalistic one. Revolutions don't have to be violent either. It can happen right underneath our fingertips. For example, Elon Musk is the main revolutionary of the ideology, more on that later, that humans should be an interplanetary species. No bullets will be fired in this interplanetary revolution, but a Revolution it still is. Revolutions come about because humans are always pursuing their own self-interest, nothing wrong with that. Some of those self-interested humans find success and gain power. That power breeds more power and oftentimes leads to corruption, which leads subsequent humans to become resentful of said humans in power and boom, revolution. And at the core of it all is the never-ending power struggle between the haves, the have-nots, and the have-a-little-want-mores. The haves are pretty simple. They sit at the top of the hierarchy, have the most resources, and are the smallest in number. Because they're so well off at the top, why on earth would they want things to change? Change threatens their power so there's no hope in trying to convert them. They're set in their establishment ways, they profit off of the status quo. Because they're at the top, everyone is trying to tear them down and get a piece of their very big pie. So one of their biggest worries is losing everything that they have. The have-nots are also pretty simple. They're by far the largest in number at the very bottom of the hierarchy. For the most part, they resent the haves, the upper class, and view them as simply getting rich off of their aching, tired backs. Whether that's true or not, they also hate the upper class's legal system, their police, their opulence. They're trapped together by poverty, disease, low skills, ignorance, and despair. While the upper class has the power of resources, the only power the lower class has is the power of their sheer numbers. They feel pretty hopeless and because they have such huge pain points, it's very easy to sway them. With the right leader in place, you can very easily fan the flames of their suffering for your revolution. And because they're already at the lowest of the low, once that flame starts, the only direction they can go is up. And then there's the have a little want some more crowd, also known as the middle class. Stuck right in the middle, the middle class are torn between two paths. On one hand, they want to uphold the current system to protect the little wealth that they have and to hopefully move into the upper class by playing by the rules. On the other hand, they also see the temptation to overthrow the status quo so they can join in on pillaging the rich for some instant gratification. This makes the middle class have sort of a split personality, to revolution or to not revolution. An example of this was perfectly illustrated with the recent stimulus checks. Because they're in a complacent spot, things are going okay, I guess. Most of the middle class are do-nothings. On one hand, they'll preach for social justice, change, equality. They'll take part in the latest social media trends, show support, and make them feel like such a good, noble person. But in reality, they're not going to do much and would typically choose the safe route to make sure they come out on top. And every single revolution can be traced back to these three classes. The haves have the power, the have-nots become resentful of their power, that resentment simmers over time until boom, revolutionaries overthrow the haves. Then there's a period of not necessarily peace, but calmness. 
until the revolutionaries slowly or quickly in some cases morph into the same system they once condemned. And the revolutionary clock is set right back to where it first started. So is the tragedy of human civilization. But before you get violent and burn the system down, I urge you not to. Let's say you start a revolution, a coup right now, and you take control of the government. If the middle class is still feeling complacent with the current system, if all the have-nots aren't fired up behind you, the people in power you're trying to overthrow will swiftly crush you. Why? Because you didn't have the massive support, you didn't lay the groundwork for revolution. Kind of like what happened in Seattle's autonomous zone or the recently attempted coup in Venezuela. Revolutions happen before a single shot is ever fired. It happens when all the have-nots agree that yes, we finally had enough. It happens when the majority of the middle class say, eh, I'm not sure how I feel about revolution, but as long as they leave me alone, I'm not gonna fight against it. Or in other words, it happens when your populace is ripe for revolution, much like how bananas get ripe for eating. As we mentioned before in our video on mass psychology, the memorable events of history are the visible effects of the invisible changes of human thought. Treat your revolution like a movie. There's an act one where the stage is set, the problem is presented, the good and bad guys are distinguished. Then comes act two where the tension builds, the pressure turns up, and things slowly crescendo into act three the climax of your revolution along with the aftermath. A lot of these idealists want to jump straight into the climax, but without the foreplay, your revolution will fall flat on its knees. As John Adams wrote, the revolution was effected before the war commenced. The revolution was in the hearts and minds of the people. This radical change in the principles, opinions, sentiments, and affections of the people was the real American revolution. So that's your real job, change the public's mind first, make them feel disgusted and enslaved by the system, but not too enslaved to where they feel they can't do anything about it, and your revolution will take care of itself. If you're a part of the haves in power to prevent revolution, your job is to keep your plebs feeling complacent and submissive, it's as simple as that. Now that our foreplay is done, let's get into the nitty gritty details of your revolution. All revolutions start with an ideology. An idea that the masses can rally behind against those evil men in charge. Something that can get people to move past their primitive instincts of putting their own well-being before others. Something that ordinary lower and middle class people who are just trying to get by are willing to die for. That's a big ask. That's why all ideologies that have led the revolutions of the past have always been around grand ideas like justice, equality, and freedom. Whether or not those revolutionary leaders actually believed in those things is a different story. The point is, ideologies are what ignite revolutions. And your job is to nurture and infect the ideology of your choosing into as many people as possible. Every ideology has one central idea where everything stems from. The Marxist central idea is that evil lies in the greedy capitalists exploiting the poor old proletariats. The libertarian central idea is that evil lies in big government suffocating poor old individuals. So pick your ideology and spread your gospel. You do this by working in the very system that you despise. This can be done via spreading propaganda, I mean educating the public in schools, on the internet, etc. This also means getting into politics, passing bills, starting nonprofits, protesting, or maybe even donating money to people that can do it for you. All with the goal of slowly getting that drumbeat of revolution rising. One insanely effective tactic you can use is the angry mob. Use some kind of emotional tragic event to rally up an angry mob that demands change. With the angry mob behind you, you can use them to publicly shame people that disagree with you and make demands. Since the middle class usually looks for the safe way out and the haves are worried about losing what they have, at the hands of an angry mob, they'll easily submit to your demands without putting up a fight. But be wary, go too far and you'll risk building resentment against the crowd which will eventually backfire. Now you may be saying to yourself, but Jake, this sounds like a lot of work, I want change now. And you're right, it does take a lot of work. Changing the culture of millions of people takes time. But what's the alternative? We already covered how calling people racist or commies doesn't help, except in the context of an angry mob. And overthrowing the system without laying down the groundwork doesn't help either. On top of that, the battle over the minds of the public may not even be won in your lifetime. Depending on where you are in the revolutionary clock, you may not even live to see the day where your revolution happens. So you may be wondering what the purpose of all this is, which is a fair point. But what is life without a greater purpose, without something bigger to fight for? In my opinion, that's not a life worth living. 
Now you may be wondering, but Jake, aren't you trying to change culture with these videos? And to that, I will reply, absolutely. I am here as a revolutionary to propagate the ideology of self-reliance, of curiosity, of being a dangerous individual. And if you can't get behind that ideology, then I don't know what to tell you. But if you can get behind those ideas, well then, there's a subscribe button and a notification bell below. <laughs> All of us have an agenda, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, but at least I admit mine. If you want to support this channel financially, consider checking out the course I made on how to land a remote job with the link below. That's how I got my start in this whole make money online world, and that is what I recommend for others as well. If you want more day in the life kind of stuff, behind the scenes kind of stuff, memes, you can follow me on Instagram at jaketrend.io. That is going to wrap it up for this video. This is like the third time I'm recording this because I messed up like twice. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. I've been Jake. I'll see you guys in the next one.